am setting up here so I can get the right height for the heel, but at the same time, I mean, well, that might be the perfect height right there. I think it will. Okay, hold on real quick, guys. Let me check something. Right there. Okay, so it's not going to work with this. The reason for it is, like I said, I've seen some pretty bigger, big TikTokers and YouTubers when they're building stuff. You know, they see where you can see their hand and stuff like that. So give me a second while I get this set up. There we go. Oh. What I'm trying to do is make a specific tackle that we have that we uh, I can take a bunch of samples with me so that way when I go over there I can pull out all this gear for them to go from there. So I am looking forward. So right here I have um, 140 pound piano wire and this is what I'll be using to make the uh, setup here. And actually I've used 175 and 200 pound chest. Um, the stronger you make it, the, it just means the bigger fish you're trying to target, which works both ways for you because when you have the smaller stuff, uh, Spanish mackerel, bluefish, um, they can take it off real easily. Like they come up, nibble it, and it slips off. So if it goes stronger, it will be better for you. All right, so we got Luciano Jaime, um, Hell's Hitman. What's up, boss? John Darnell, William. And Zach, Toby, hi man, what's up, gents, how y'all doing? It is Monday, Monday, Monday. And yeah, so I got to clip a bunch of these wires, get this set up so I can do it. But also, too, it works out to my advantage because the guys, um, when they were making leaders, normally they drop beads. And then instead of sorting them, they do this. They put them into mixed up. Uh, containers like that and then leave them there so they don't have to deal with them. Well, this actually works out to my benefit now because I was thinking, man, this, you know, I'm going to have to have all these different bins. Oh, sorry. <coughs> I'm going to have to have all these different bins for the uh, to get all the different color beads because when I'm making them, I like to have an assortment kind of like on our wall with the different kingfish rig or uh, cast out rigs. So I figure, well, let's use them up now. So um, I'm not going to tell them though, because I need them to stay on job, you know, or stay focused on what they're doing, not be mixing stuff up and be lazy about it and stuff. So yeah, definitely got to stay on top of it. Now, the thing is, I'm looking for a container that I can put them in. So, I mean, I'm going to use them up pretty quickly, but still, I need something where they don't roll around with. And I have some change here that I'll put away. <laughs> ah, so you like the LS. Ah, yes, sir. That. That thing's awesome. That's actually, if you saw uh, the live video feeds from this weekend, that's what I was casting out when I was out on Caldwell Pier was LXs. Um, I didn't take my HXWs because I knew I didn't, uh, like I said, the way I was feeling this past week, I wasn't totally up to, up to par with where I normally should be on everything, so... <coughs> See fish stick or dino nuggets. Ooh. Hmm. Well, it all depends. I like the fish sticks when I'm I'm, I'm dipping and going, but I like the big old dino nuggets when I'm making sandwiches. So it really all depends where I'm at on that. You know what? 
I guess I can go ahead and do the whole thing real quick. Make a whole bunch of slide line weights. And if not, I'll be prepped out for it. <coughs> doing is just let the, the two ends fall at the same time and that will keep me from having to worry about big old kinks in, in there and stuff like that because I don't know how they unspool these to wherever they're made or spool them up you know what I mean oh, there you go nice And with my cutters here, I can cut two at a time, so. Good morning, Oscar. <clears throat> so yesterday when I got off the video, I was planning to get onto the email, um, but I got sidetracked with uh, some other gear that I had to get going. I worked on that, got that so stored away and stuff like that, and then, oh, what a day, what a day. Jigs do, Reaper, 9 foot, 30 tossing, 0, 1, that, That's a pretty good distance, especially with the 9 footer. Um, but what you're throwing is a lure, correct? Oh, you, you've already been turning and burning, William, huh? <laughs> Damn it. What time, what time did you start this morning? What's up, John? How you doing? Morning, morning. Uh, here's Raven about. Yeah, no, I don't know if I'll be able to see it, to tell you the truth. Um, the wife was talking about she wanted to, you know, keep the kids out of school for a day to go check it out or whatever. But the kids were wanting to actually go to school. <laughs> so, um, don't know. We're 9.15 over here. Nice. Okay, 94% coverage like cloudy skies or that you'll be able to see 94% of the actual eclipse. Everybody's been waiting for this for months since the last one came through, and then they said it was going to happen again really quick. Um, growing up, I don't remember when we had a time like this when they were like back to back. It was either that or I didn't pay attention, one of the two. Could be both. <laughs> What's everybody else? Oh, okay. So I did see something about that on there too. Uh, just let everybody know, guys, be careful on the roads today. Um, they were saying that anytime there's a major eclipse like this, that it is hazardous to human health. And what they mean by that 
is that people are on the road not paying attention to the road, that they're looking up instead of driving, and so a lot more collusions happen at this time. So just kind of giving you all a heads up, guys. Be careful on the roads. You know, a lot of people may not be paying attention to exactly what they're doing. So um, if you park on the side of the road, make sure you park way off so that way somebody that's not paying attention doesn't actually sideswipe you. <coughs> that's a little food for thought right there. And it's checking through and make sure because I'm expecting some emails and stuff like that, so. Mm. Oh, man, I forgot to do something. Hold on, I gotta send a text real quick. And I did send a link to Jacob, but he is out, out running around, running, running errands and stuff like that. All right, guys. So now that I've got them cut, I've got my wires cut. Um, I use my snap swivel, and I don't really use the real expensive snap swivels on here because um, with the weight flying around and stuff like that, it does get heavily beat up on big fish, especially if you hit any tarpon. Tarpon love to throw these weights. So what I'll do is I'll fold it in half, slip the weight on, and then I'll grab a bead, slip it on. I've got some 0.8 millimeter double mini sleeves. And actually I need to get a little bin for them, force them out, just a few, not too many. I don't want to get ahead of myself and have them all over the place. God. I, I trimmed my nails last week like really short, and now that I need them, I can't I can't grip anything, and it sucks. So, and now I'll slip a a sleeve on there, or, uh, and now I'm gonna crimp it right there. And actually, I, I went <laughs> I made these a little too long. I like them about right there, just so they're not too long, but. Uh, What's the word I'm looking for? Okay, so the reason why I don't like them too long. One is when you're trying to store them, they tend to grab everywhere. So one, you can make them with the wires still straight down so you can kind of store them in a, a decent area. But I like them short, like, you know, the shorter end because when I do have them expanded out and stuff, they don't take out a whole, I mean, you know, a bunch of these would expand it out would take up a lot more space. So a lot more of a danger area, basically. And there you go. That is a slide weight or a trolley rig that we use for kingfish. And that one's a four ounce. And I'm going to keep making them while I am waiting to go to my meeting. Uh, I do have a 10 o'clock, so I'll be leaving here right about 9.55. I just read Hyman's post. Yes, that is um, definitely some food for thought right there. So be careful, be careful, be careful out there, please. Um, mm, mm. Right. Oh, man, my allergy is still, still, they're not as bad as it was last week. But when I think I'm I'm done with them, the a little slacker is gonna come up and join the party. <laughs> oh, Caprice. Let's see if we're gonna be live for the unboxing day. Yes, I am waiting for that. Uh Oh, you, you got you invited your son to to watch the channel, William. 
And this is kind of what I mean. See how this is the group of weights that I made while I was out there fishing. And uh, get that out of there. Oh, that's why. I was wondering why I was all stuck in there. It's because I left the trailer one on there. But you can see how when they're like that, they, and when they're sitting like that, they, they hold weight. So when you move too quick, you will poke yourself on these. I wish there was a better way for us to make them without the sharp edges. But once you cut metal, it, it creates a burr, it creates a sharp edge, and it definitely will stick you. And it's annoying. <laughs> it's not extremely painful, but then again, it can be if it hits the nerve. So, hmm. Oh, awesome. Cool deal. We'll look forward to him. What's your son's name? <clears throat> That's a huge distance right there, too, Jaime. I'm glad you're on the channel sharing that because a lot of guys, sometimes, I mean... <laughs> Even with the uh, the advisories that are out there and stuff like that, it's just like it's not really taken into consideration of what it truly happens like that. I've seen a bunch of videos where big rigs um, are tested, you know, their brakes are applied and try to get them to stop quickly and, you know, they, go, they still keep sliding, so... So, um, doing the ends with plastic dip will hold just while they're in the store. But once uh, once you get them out in action and stuff like that, the first time um, that snap is pulled off, I'm pretty sure it will get pulled off itself. I've, I haven't tested it, to be honest. That is a good one. Um, It got me thinking, though. I mean, you know, there's got to be a way to try to make them semi. Um, dull on the point. Hmm. Craig Fitz is. Uh, Well, Craig, if you're watching, boss, welcome to the channel. And definitely, as soon as um, that package comes in, we got a spooling video to do. Ooh. Say so some of the beads have a bigger hole on them. So, we, well, let's do this. Uh, there we go. That hole is a lot bigger. So the sleeve that I'm using is too too small for it. So I've got to pay attention to that, too. Because even some of the beads here, um, the manufacturer will have uh, two different sizes of holes. You know what I mean? So one's bigger than the other. And I have, I have to watch that. So for the most part, I'll be able to use most of the beads um, for this, which would be good. So, but I'll be left with a few colors. And mainly it's these two colors, these two and one similar to this one. Uh, the blue one, I think it is. Yeah, these three are the main colors that I won't be able to use. Um, now, this one I'll be able to use um, like 50-50. Half of them are good, half of them are not. So. Now, mm. the plastic dip portion, though, would be cool. 
because then they would leave a little deal and then they could pull it off, I guess, when they need it. It'd be okay. safer for us for transport, for sure. Hard life. That would be me, but we've got a three-year contract. Mm, I'm okay. Thank you. <laughs> like they still are trying to, well, we'll send you a free deal. They, 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 they. I got enough spam and junk mail coming in. I don't need somebody okaying somebody else to send something else. So. Yeah. <clears throat> that and also to uh, my wife's company. Uh, actually, they work with the Merchant services. So if I have any problems, I can got a quick quick phone call that I can make on it and stuff like that. So, mm. ooh, um, dang, your your foot's still pretty bad, John. I was hoping you, you were able to get it up or or go to the ER yesterday if you were going to go. So. it there I mean <clears throat> and even when I'm on the road and I see a big rig like I try to look up and see if I can see the driver through the the side mirrors you know if I can like look at through the reflection if I can see the driver's face then I know um I mean, I don't know, but I, I feel like the driver can see me if I can see him like that through the reflection. So that actually, that might be something that you can answer. I know there's blind spots on the trucks at certain areas. And so that's what I, I try to stick to as a rule of thumb for me as I'm driving near them and stuff like that or behind them uh, or aside. Hmm. Podiatrist. That is for the foot doctor, right? And so, Ray, um, again, I've been trying to comment on your deal. Toby, um, I see a lot of Toby's comments on your comments and stuff like that, but I have not still i'm still trying to comment on your comments and they won't let me so i don't know if i've given up hope on it but um i don't know why it won't let me comment on your comments so Friday hasn't been fixed. Oh, that sucks, Patrick. So is that like rainwater or is that one of the pipes are messed up? So do you think with what the way I've been thinking, if I could see the driver through the reflection, um, that he's, he's got a good possibility of seeing me? Good morning, morning. Definitely need to pick up a coffee. Well, I know at the um, at, uh, the chiropractor, we go to Santa Fe Chiropractic, and um, they have the uh, 
uh, coffee. <laughs> I get there and I get me some coffee. <laughs> on his 10th cup. So for those of y'all that drink coffee, I mean, I normally don't drink coffee all the time. I wish I could. I just don't get up and actually sit there and make it myself. It's a process, I guess. Um, have you noticed throughout the years that you need more and more to attain the same level or does it has it gotten more to a point that it really doesn't wake you up um, with the amount of caffeine in there and stuff like that? <laughs> See, a buddy of mine went out and fished in California, and they were out there. They actually used a kayak to drop bait, and he said he only dropped it a couple hundred yards out just because the waves were so big. He got rolled several times, uh, but he was able to get a bait out, and uh, they ended up catching a big, uh, big uh, great white. It was probably like 10 foot or something like that, and which is pretty awesome because, I mean, he's from Texas, so... We, we, ooh, ooh. Um, all of us want to catch great whites. <laughs> so, but he also did learn. I don't know why I'm trying to put that on. I was wondering why it was so difficult. It's because I haven't done all the other steps yet. See, the wires want to pull away from from it and trying to squeeze them to get the the, uh, the sleeve on. Actually, is a little more difficult when you don't have these other other steps done in, uh, ahead of time. So now that I got the weight on and the the uh, bead, now it does make putting on the weight a lot easier. They're a lot more side by side. So. <clears throat> Also here too that the uh, the coffee is a natural diuretic as long as you're not throwing all the sugar and and creamer and everything else in it. said that after they caught the great white that the game wardens uh, came out or were sent to where they were at and then basically they said okay so since a game uh, a great white has been caught they are confirmed in the area so fishermen are now nobody's allowed into the water swimmers uh, surfers and everything like that because the great white has been spotted and verified in there but also too they're not intentionally allowed to go target great whites so since they caught one they were asked to leave the beach kind of deal so <laughs> it's like a catch-22 so but i did hear something along the lines that um that that's like a rule any anywhere and i'm like well i've never heard that but again too you know great whites have never really been the 
the shark that we could sit there and say, you know what, I'm going to intentionally target because there's so few and far in between. But I guess if you're fishing in an area like that, um, then I guess you have more of a chance to catch it then yeah if you say that i guess then they can definitely say no you're not you know <laughs> okay so great whites are protected pretty much everywhere um te uh, they're they're federally protected everywhere as far as i know but um i know in uh certain areas like i said i know in florida Cali because it's been verified guys there say that yes you cannot intentionally target great whites but if you happen to catch one well then you know it's different but you can't sit there and say I'm, I'm going after great white because if they you do then they okay we gotta leave uh, I need to get more weights guys I finished that oh. Morning. <laughs> How can I help you? Rope? How thick of a rope? Oh, thin rope. Okay. I don't have. Because I want to make a, a line for the drop instead of using the line, you know, instead of using that line. Mm -hmm. Oh, you're making a, a cell line. I have a cell line. Okay. And I have the line, but uh, when I put it in, bed, I, I wrap it on the pole, but I want to put it on the bucket. Yeah, like those over there? Mm -hmm. um, the only other place that I can think of that it has any kind of rope that might be what you're looking for would be Academy. Um, they, yeah, they, they use it for uh, not trot lines. Well, trot lines. They use it for trot lines. It's a green rope, and they they sell it at Academy. Yeah, and it's about it's about yay thick. But yeah, they use that. Uh -huh. That that I cannot confirm anything like that. That's why I use the monofilament. Yes. Yeah, we make those the sails, the uh, the motor and housing and all of that. Um, right now, I don't ha I don't keep the sails assembled because they're so big. You know, they take up a lot of space really quick. But if somebody places an order, then we can get it built up for them. And I 
Yeah, you have a good one. Beads, yeah. Oops. Yes. Huh? They should be right there. Probably some cable for the casting jack. The casting jack of Yeah. Okay. All right. Here. Uh, two ninety nine. Okay. <coughs> I saw you here yesterday too. Yep. Yep. I was working. And you don't. You don't. Guess what the hell happened? Huh? Yeah. Well, we'll talk about it in a bit because I'm live on the channel. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I didn't want you to say some personal business out there. <laughs> oh, what they do now? The 95, the F150 Uh huh. I charged the battery last week and it's been dead for about a year. Yeah. Walking around, charging it, started it. Cleaning it up, you know, because I'm going to start music again. Turned it off, took the throttle body off. After taking the throttle body, we needed it around the truss. Put the charger up, close the hood. I get the part next week, which was this weekend. Uh -huh. I go over there and I open the door. Today, I mean, yesterday in the morning. Uh -huh. Saturday morning. Yeah. Something I caught on fire, fire. I looked down on the floorboard, the emergency brake pedal, yeah, all that inside meltdown all the way down to the carpet. If my truck had been cracked a little bit, it'd have probably caught all on fire in between two houses. My house, oh and wow, I didn't cut my truck on fire, but it probably ran out of oxygen. Yeah, I didn't have oxygen to keep. So it doused itself up. Dang, talk about lucky. Oh, man. So now I got to take the whole dashboard out. I got to do a lot of shit. But anyway. Man. That's why I was, I was at six. Pulled it yesterday. I drove over there. They opened on Sundays. I didn't know that. Uh -huh. I thought your truck got here. I thought it was your truck. Yeah, yeah. All right, well. Dang it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The Jackerville casting, right? You yeah. said? Okay, cool. Yeah, let me know because I'm leaving here in about 10 minutes. How you doing, boss? Thank you, sir. You too. Okay, got that. I'll check my mail here in a bit.
to provide the military reaction. No, that that's per, that's pretty awesome that you. Oh, yes, sir. Okay, cool deal. Awesome, awesome. Captain Drum shipment came in, so I'll open up that later. I know what that is. And, uh, looking forward to it. Uh, well, I mean, that, that's good. Like I said, I mean, you know, shark fishing is shark fishing, you know. Uh, they're, they're wild animals at the end of the day. You can't always predict what they're going to do or not do. And um, that's just, you know, you got to remember that. They're wild animals. So just because it hasn't happened before doesn't mean it'll never happen, you know. Um, I know in Australia they were talking about it um, with the bull sharks and the Zambezi sharks that are in the waters over there. They've got confirmed, you know, 11, 12, 13, 14 footers out in that river system area, but that the, um, they don't, they've never bit any of the, the swimmers there. Pray it keeps that way. Um, but they do say that the fishermen um, have been affected by them because they'll come up and they want to eat uh, the fish off the line and stuff like that. Uh, yeah, there's a casting leader right there. If you need more. Oh, okay. Ten, ten sheets. Because uh, actually, no, there's nine per sheet, so. Yeah. So fifteen sheets. And these, these right here don't have a stock number. Can you check and see or can you put the oh. stock number or do I have to write it in? Uh, what is the stock number on it? Just so I don't have to go through. Oh. I don't know. All right. Can you check up there? Is that or check the paperwork? Yeah, I'll check the paperwork. Um, yeah, I'll check the paperwork. Yeah, the paperwork. Yeah, I'll check the paperwork. Yeah, I'm definitely trying to add it all uh, into all the uh, printouts that we do now so we don't have to. So when we created all of our leaders, we. I knew they needed some kind of item numbers and stuff like that. Well, I've been back and forth with it because I created it one way thinking it worked that way, but then found out that it doesn't work for like barcoding situations. And so I went back to another way and, ooh. okay. All right, three ways. Hmm. All right, guys. Well, looking at the time, too, I'm going to have to cut the video because I got to take off to go to my appointment. But I will be back live uh, this afternoon. So that's when we'll be doing the unboxing video because the, the tackle should be in by then. More than likely, it'll come in while I'm over here at this appointment. Um, but Jeff doesn't do the, the video opening, so I'm the only one who does right now. So. Stay tuned for that. We will be back, guys. And again, our 25,000 subscriber mark giveaway is coming up quick. Don't miss out on that because we're going to keep. We got more sponsors coming in pretty much every couple of days. Something new is coming in or added in. So right now we're looking at okay, everything's set and done. We're sitting right now at about five to six thousand dollars worth of gear or prizes that are going to be included in the giveaway and we're looking for 25 spots to win so oh yeah y'all have a good one guys we'll talk to y'all later